Hi, everybody. Good Friday night to you, and welcome to VibeFortBend.com coverage of Ridgepoint Panther baseball in the playoffs. The Panthers tonight are going for the sweep in this fourth round of the playoffs against the Pearland Oilers, whom they defeated last night by a score of 6-2. to two. And you heard it right here on VibeFortBend.com, your broadcast home for Fort Bend County sports. And Rich Point is full of confidence right now. Of course, sometimes how confident you are and how good you are depends upon how good the opposing pitcher is going into the next game. And Pearland's putting a pretty good guy on the mound, but Rich Point is doing quite the same with Hunter Nichols. And we'll get all into that with the Batter Up show. And there are other things that aren't really so much baseball related as we go through the batter up show because Ridge Point has an extra incentive besides just being great competitors and wanting to win and wanting to uh, be great baseball team. There's another reason that they really, really want to win the series tonight rather than let Pearland get the win and, and push it to a game three tomorrow. So we'll get into that when we return with our interviews with both head coaches and Ridge Point is the visiting team tonight. So we will bring you our visit with Clinton Welch first. Tonight's exclusive VipeFortBend.com radio broadcast of the Ridgepoint Panthers and the Pearland Oilers in Game 2 of the Regional Region 3 6A semifinal playoff series is brought to you by Xfinity, the future of awesome, by First Tire and Auto, four great Fort Bend County locations where you can get the best prices on tires, you can get great service, anything your vehicle needs to run at its very best. All four locations open Monday through Saturday. Visit FirstTireAndAuto.com. By Archer Volkswagen, open since 1956 and ready to serve you. Archer Volkswagen is on Highway 59 South, just inside the Sam Houston Tollway, and you will feel like family at Archer Volkswagen. And by the Needville Insurance Agency, put hundreds of dollars back in your pocket when Bradley Stavenaugh and the Needville Insurance Agency team shop all those insurance carriers, and they will find you the very lowest premium. You don't even have to leave your house. Call Bradley Stavenaugh and he will save you money on your car insurance or your home insurance or both. He's certainly done that for me. 979-793-7411 or NeedvilleInsurance.com. We'll be back with head coach Clinton Welch of your Ridgepoint Panthers when we return on the Batter Up Show, Game 2 between Pearland and Ridgepoint coming your way at the top of the hour. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. Welcome everybody to the Friday night game two edition of the Batter Up Show as Ridgepoint takes on Pearland and we're with Clinton Welch the head coach of the Panthers who had to be proud of his team last night what were some of the the best takeaways from the game last night that your team won by a score of six to two well I would say that when we got behind two to nothing and We were not settled in real well, and uh, as soon as Kellen started settling in and pitching the way he's capable of, the team kind of relaxed also, and then we put up a big inning. But it's the same old thing, just the ability to fight back after getting down, which this team has done a lot. It may seem a little bit silly, but even when you're up in the stands, you can kind of sense when a team just is not bothered too much by falling behind by a couple of runs. And there's also a a typical pattern or two typical patterns with pitchers where maybe they might be pretty tough going through the the lineup the first time and then maybe the other team starts to hit them a little bit. Kellen was just the opposite. 
And uh, is that the best performance he's had for uh, two or three innings where he retired 11 in a row? Well, he's he's been pretty consistent all year. And he really didn't get hit hard the first couple of innings. He was uh, struggling just a little bit with his secondary pitches getting him over. But the hits they got, maybe one of them was actually hit hard. So you could argue he had a lot of bad luck there in the first inning, first couple of innings as well. But, yeah, he definitely fought back, pitched a great game, the back four innings. And on the offensive side, Travis Vlasic is just on fire. I would, for your own safety, don't touch him right now. And maybe just to help him keep going the way he is, uh, just just leave him alone. Is there any particular secret to what he's done? <laughs> no, it's just getting clutch hits, playing the game. He's doing well. Uh, we're getting a lot of quality at bats up and down the lineup besides him. But kind of like I told a guy last night, he's, he hits clean up for a reason. So he did a good job last night getting a couple of clutch doubles and driving in runs when we really needed it. And from my layman's point of view, I, I think it's a good sound strategy when you're playing tennis to make your opponent, opponent move from side to side a lot. And so he hits a double to the left field corner and the next time up, he hits a double to the right field corner. I'm sure you told him to do that, right? Uh, sure. <laughs> but no, he just hit the pitch of the location. The double down the left field line was something in her half, and then he did a good job taking a pitch just off the outside corner down the right field line. So good quality at bats. All right, Coach Welch, thank you very much for being with us, and uh, we expect to be with you again. We know we will. And uh, I know that you're hoping it is next week. But uh, good luck on the, the game tonight against Pearland. All right, Roger. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. And by the way, we can't give you a batter up show without telling you something that is truly in play here. And that is the fact that Ridge Point's seniors are going to graduate and go through their walk to get their diploma tomorrow morning. And it would be so wonderful for them if they could make that walk and then spend the rest of the day and the night celebrating their graduation. But if Pearland prevails tonight, what Ridge Point would have to do would be graduate in the morning and then go grab lunch, go put your uniforms on and take a bus to the University of Houston and play a must-win game three. So it would certainly be a blessing for the Panthers if they can get the victory tonight. And they will go with Hunter Nichols on the mound tonight. Roger Smith with you on BikeFortBend.com. And we'll be back, hopefully, with David Rogers, head coach of Pearland, when we return on the Batter Up Show right after this. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Texas. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Don't miss the UIL Baseball State Championship starting Wednesday, June 8th at UFCU Dish Fought Field in Austin and Dell Diamond in Round Rock. Ticket information and more can be found at UIL Texas. Org. The Batter Up Show will continue with David Rogers, head coach of the Pearland Oilers, here on VipeFortBend.com. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity Mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom! Shakalaka! That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash 3 for 1, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New fast internet 300 megabits for second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post-pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. Welcome back to the Batter Up Show at the U of H as it's Pearland taking on Ridgepoint in game two of their playoff series. And we're with David Rogers, head coach of the Oilers. And 
I know you've got a lot of coaching experience and you've been through those game twos where you must win the game many times. Are there any strategies that you share with your, your players, generally speaking, just to make sure that they're ready for a game such as this? Well, you know, we try to keep them as loose as possible. You know, we explain to them that uh, even Ridge Point, to this matter, has had to go game three to survive in the playoffs. And, you know, it's, it's nothing unusual uh, when you have a three-game series. Somebody's going to be down 1-0 and just stay loose as possible and play baseball. I've noticed that, uh, I, well, I didn't notice, you just told me, but I, I assumed when I was driving to the ballpark that you would make Ferraro your pitcher tonight because he has come through in the clutch for you before. He's so talented, it's kind of hard to decide what is he better at, the offensive game or the pitching or the fielding. What can you say about a player like Ferraro? Well, you know, you, you talk to a lot of college people and they'll say, some will tell you that they don't recruit first baseman. I'll tell you that he's a baseball player. Okay, there are players who play baseball, and then there are baseball players. And Caden Farrell is a baseball player. Uh, he, he can dominate you at the plate. He might be the f best first baseman in the state. And uh, when his command is on, he's, uh, he's uh, a dude on the mound. All right. Is there anything in particular that you'd like to see your team do differently offensively? Because they were getting lots of base running traffic early, and then later on they were unable to come through with hits for a little while. What do you say to your players to make sure they have the best chance to succeed with the bats? Well, you know, and anytime you're in a game like this right here, whether it's game two, game three, even game one, you got to be able to play in the moment. And sometimes uh, that defines a baseball player and who you are is being able to play in the moment. BP is good, practice is good, but when the moment happens, the lights are on and the umpire says play, you got to be able to play. And, you know, we just need to get some, some breaks, go our way and hit the ball and can't worry about pulling everything, hit the ball, you know, oppo middle gap and just hit it where it's pitched and go from there. I know there's an expression, but it may be literal too, and you all often hear it about quarterbacks in football. Their heartbeat slows down when everybody else's speeds up. There's one other thing I wanted to ask you just from my layman's eye. It seemed like you got a really good umpiring crew. Uh, it seemed like they got a little bit of chirping from each side, but a fairly small number for such a critical game when the fans are so passionate. And how does that go? How do you go about you and Coach Welch deciding who's going to be the umpiring crew? You know, we just kind of looked at, you know, who the umpires are in the Houston area, threw out a list of about 10, 12 guys who we liked and left it up to them. You know, in games like this, I'll be honest with you, Roger, if you have to worry about who's behind the plate, you got more things than that to worry about. Well, Kevin Ellis did a great job, and I think it's Mr. Ryan who's going to move over from first base and be behind the plate tonight. But I thought they did a good job because nobody from either side that I heard was talking about the umpires, and that's always a good thing. Oh, they did a great job. You know, like I said, there, uh, Houston has some really talented umpires in this chapter. Uh, they did a great job last night. I expect nothing less tonight. And like I said, you know, if, if we don't have to worry about umpires, which we shouldn't at this level, uh, then there's more things to be worried about than that. All right, Coach Rogers, thanks very much for being with us. And I know you hope very much that I'm bugging you tomorrow night at about no. this time. Thank you very much. Let's talk tomorrow. All right, we'll have the starting lineups for you on VikeFortBend.com. When we return, Roger Smith with you on a nice, warm evening with very little wind at the University of Houston. We'll be right back. First Tire and Automotive, serving Fort Bend County drivers for over 20 years, salutes and congratulates the graduating class of 2022. Wherever the road takes you, you can be sure that you'll need professional auto care along the way. First Tire and Automotive's four locations throughout Fort Bend County are the perfect pit stops for all of your auto repair and maintenance needs. Check out the website firsttireandauto.com for great savings. The First Tire and Automotive technicians can fix all problems on any maker model. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon.
Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenal with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. All right, here we go. Your starting lineups on BiteFortBend.com. Game two between Ridge Point and Pearland. The Panthers are the visiting team tonight. Zion Stevens, the second baseman, leads it off for Ridge Point. Batting second, the third baseman, Parker Martin. Justin Vosses at shortstop, bats third. And in the cleanup spot, it is Travis Vlasic, the first baseman, who is hot as a pistol in the way he's been swinging the bat lately. In the five spot, catcher J.J. Kennett. Carter Groen in left field. He bats sixth. Batting seventh, it's Owen Ferris in right field. Batting eighth, it's the designated hitter. And at this moment, when I got the lineup from Coach Welch, he wasn't quite sure who he was going to use as designated hitter for the starting pitcher, Hunter Nichols. And then in the ninth spot, it is center fielder, Mason Dossett. For Pearland, Anthony Avalos plays shortstop and leads off. Batting second, it's John Moya, the center fielder. Caden Ferraro starting at pitcher in the three spot. Normally he's the first baseman, but he's a great pitcher as well and a left-hander. Brett Smostrela is the left fielder batting cleanup. Braden Morse at third base bats fifth for Pearland. Justin Ogle, the first baseman, he's in the sixth spot. In the seventh spot, it's Isaiah Castaneda, the right fielder. Logan Scott is in the eighth spot, and the catcher, Jace Caceres, is the catcher. So when you talk about the guy who's on the mound tonight, Caden Ferraro, well, let's first of all talk about his offensive night last night. He's a much better hitter than he showed. Last night he was 0 for 3 with a strikeout, but he did have two homers in the Oilers' 3 to 2 win in game one against Clear Creek. That was last week in the third round, and he pitched a complete game in game two to clinch that series against Clear Creek and only gave up two hits and struck out 13. So you better look out for Caden Ferraro. He's a tough customer. But of course, you know, the Panthers did pretty well last night with Mark Zapata on the mound. Bright, sunny evening here at the University of Houston, but when that sun goes down behind the third base stands, it'll feel a lot more comfortable to the fans who are out here in the stands. The ballpark dimensions 330 feet down each of the foul lines, 375 feet to each power alley and 390 feet to straightaway center. And here is Zion Stevens striding into the batter's box to lead things off for Ridge Point. He's got a 310 on base percentage for the postseason and he has a double. He leads the team in walks with seven. Lefty, Caden Ferraro working to the right-handed hitting Zion Stevens and he steps off before we get going. By the way, to start this game, The black field turf of the pitching mound is in sunlight. So Caden Ferraro is in the sun, and the ball will hit shade before it reaches the strike zone. There's a curveball, strike one. Mike Grine is the home plate umpire. David Spiegel at first base. Dwayne Cooper at second, and Kevin Ellis at third. Here comes Ferraro's next pitch. The 0-1 catches the outside corner, and it looks like we're going to have a slightly generous outside corner given based on that second pitch. Nothing in two on Zion Stevens. Here comes the next one. Swings and misses, and he's tagged out by the catcher, Caceres, and there's one out. Now it is Parker Martin, the third baseman. He's got a double and a 261 batting average in the postseason, six for 23. Lefty hitter facing Ferraro who likes to work quickly, and here comes the first pitch, down and away for a ball. Parker Martin with two RBIs because, well, frankly, Travis Vlasic and Justin Vosses have been hogging all the RBIs. 
That pitch is also also outside. Two and nothing on Parker Martin. White batting gloves. Here's the pitch. And he fouls it straight back into the screen. Had a good cut. Bridgepoint wearing the white pants with the purple piping on either side. The purple jersey tops with white numerals and letters. Two and one the count. Here's the pitch to Martin. Swings and another healthy cut, but he just gets a little piece of it and fouls it straight back again. The ball ricochets off the net and it's back inside fair territory and third baseman Braden Morse comes over to get it. Justin Vosses waiting on deck. And Ferraro wanted a different baseball. Two and two the count. Martin ready and here it comes. And he sprays it foul on the left side and ricochets off one of the athletic department buildings here at the U of H. So Ferraro still in sunlight and the ball moves into the shade. That one bounces in and Martin takes. It's three and two. Roger Smith and the producer extraordinaire, Rosie Vega inside the mothership at Vipe World Headquarters. 95 degrees at game time. 3-2 pitch is fouled down the left field line, twisting and out of play. Brett Smostrela, the left fielder, gives it a look. And the ball ricochets off that aforementioned building, goes back onto the playing surface. Jace Caceres is the catcher for Pearland. Caden, I'm sorry, uh, that was last night's. I forgot to erase something from last night. Justin Ogle at first base. Logan Scott at second. Anthony Avalos is at shortstop and Braden Morse at third. Here's another 3-2 pitch. Right back, one hopper, right to the pitcher, and he underhands it to first base, and there are two away. Score that one to three as Ferraro makes the play. Now it's Justin Vosses, and this is how Pearland wants to see Justin coming up there with two outs and nobody on. Justin hitting 360, that second on the team in batting average for the playoffs. He's only drawn one walk. First pitch to him is outside. He's got three doubles. He's nine for 25 and has eight RBIs. Second on the team behind Travis Vlasic. Pitch by Ferraro and he hits it in the air to left field. Coming on Smostrula. Easy play for him. And that'll do it. Ridge Point goes up and down. One, two, three in the top of the first. The Pearland Oilers will be coming to bat and we'll tell you about Hunter Nichols. The senior right-hander for Ridge Point who is striding to the mound right now. We'll be right back on your broadcast home for Fort Bend County Sports. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash 3 for 1, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New fast internet 300 megabits for second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. So Hunter Nichols on the mound, and by the way, he was honored by KPRC Local 2 Sports as the UTMB High School Athlete of the Week. His record in the postseason is one and one with a 3.05 ERA. He started a game against Tompkins. That was game two last Friday night. That was the clincher. He pitched six of those seven innings. Panthers won nine to seven. He got a game start and no decision in game one against Westside, one that the Panthers won two to one in extra innings. 
And he was the starter and loser in game one against Seven Lakes. That was at the beginning of the playoffs, but since then, Ridge Point has won seven straight games. And Hunter Nichols now faces Anthony Avalos. Right-handed hitter in the back of the box. Looks at the first pitch, down and away for a ball. Hunter Nichols in 18 and one-thirds innings has given up 10 hits, 8 runs. All of those earned 16 strikeouts, but he's walked 14. He needs to keep that under control tonight. There's a strike at the knees to Avalos. Avalos is going to play his college baseball right here at the University of Houston. Takes a pitch inside. It's 2-1. and one. The shade creeping out toward the mound, but Nichols is still standing in complete sunlight. And there's a foul ball off to the right. That evens the count two and two. Here at Darrell and Lori Schroeder Park, you have the big scarlet UH logo in center field. The base cutouts are red. There's a ground ball right back through the middle behind second. Vasas has it, throws late. One hop throw picked up by Vlasic and they got him. You got to be trusting Justin. He makes plays like that all the time. Now John Moya. Moya, a left-handed hitter facing Nichols, who rocks and fires. Swing and a miss. Moya taps the outside corner of the plate, then the inside. He's ready. Here comes the 0-1. Swings and misses at that one as well. Came in at 86 miles per hour, and it really had some late movement there at the end. Dropping down. Nichols looks over the top of his glove and delivers. That's a ground ball slowly hit to Parker Martin at third. Easy play there. Two outs. Now Caden Ferraro... Like we said, he hit two homers in one game in the series against Clear Creek last week. But didn't get a hit last night against Kellen Gratisar. Left-handed hitter with a very much open stance. First pitch way upstairs, and J.J. Kennett comes to get it. J.J. is the catcher. Travis Vlasic at first base. Zion Stevens at second. Vosses at shortstop. Parker Martin at third. Outfield after this pitch. 1-0. That's a fly ball to Owen Ferris in right. He had to shade his eyes with his glove, but he makes the catch on the run. And so before we go to break, I'll let you know that Carter Groen is going to be manning left field for the Panthers. Mason Dossett in center. And Owen Ferris, who just made that play, is in right field. We'll be back after one inning. No score. Ridge Point and Pearland. First Siren Automotive, serving Fort Bend County drivers for over 20 years, salutes and congratulates the graduating class of 2022. Wherever the road takes you, you can be sure that you'll need professional auto care along the way. First Siren Automotive's four locations throughout Fort Bend County are the perfect pit stops for all of your auto repair and maintenance needs. Check out the website, firsttireandauto.com, for great savings. The First Siren Automotive technicians can fix all problems on any maker model. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAuto.com. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you, and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you so you can take care of business. 
Office Depot Office Max. Taking care of business. We want to thank the folks at Office Depot Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace in Sugarland. They take care of business every day so we can bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. All right, here is Travis Vlasic to lead it off for Ridge Point in the top of the second in a scoreless game. And he taps that one foul on the left side. Vlasic is as hot as a pistol with the baseball bat. 11 for 26. That's 423 in the postseason. Three doubles. He had a sacrifice fly. And he's got nine RBIs to lead the team. Pitch to him. Checks his swing, but it's a strike on the outside corner. And he's down 0-2 to Caden Ferraro, the left-hander for Pearland. The Oilers have to win to keep this series alive and push it to a game three tomorrow night. Vlasic swings and fouls it back. A nice little spoil on an 85 mile an hour pitch from Ferraro. Now Shade is splitting the mound. Half in shade, half in sunlight. So it's a little, little easier to pick up the ball when it's in shade the whole time, which it almost is. There's a pitch down and in. Vlasic takes and it's one and two. I didn't give you the outfielders for Pearland in the first inning. Brett Smostrela in left field, John Moya in center, and in right field, Isaiah Castaneda. 1-2 on the way, way outside to Vlasic. He was 2 for 3 with a pair of doubles last night and drove in five runs. So I guess you could say he drove in more runs last night than he had in all of the other six postseason games combined. There he hits one down the third baseline, but it goes foul before it passes the bag. And actually, I gave you a wrong number. So Ridgepoint played three games against Seven Lakes, two against Westside, two against Tompkins. So that means they played seven. So hold on. I'm having trouble with math. There's a ground ball shortstop. Avalos up with it. His throw is high. And Vlasic is safe. He'll stay right there. So Ridgepoint giving a break here in the uh, top of the second. So let me do my math again. Okay, so three games against Seven Lakes, two against Westside, two against Tompkins, and one last night. So they played eight games. So Travis Vlasic with more RBIs in the eighth game than he did in the seven previous games. There's something else that I realized that I said incorrectly last night. I said that Pearland was the champion of District 22-6A. That is incorrect. They were the champions of District 23-6A. Here is J.J. Kennett with a pair of doubles in this postseason and a 227 batting average squaring to bunt with nobody out. Pitch on the way, and he bunts it in the air, and a diving catch by Morse. They're going to double up Vlasic. Oh, my goodness. J.J. popped his bunt attempt into the air, and Morse was crashing hard. Made a spectacular play to get his glove underneath the ball before it came back down on the field turf. And I guess Pearland would say, you know, that's justice. We should have gotten Vlasic anyway. It was a throwing error. So that's a double play, and it goes five to three. Base is empty for Carter Groen. Here's the pitch by Ferraro, and almost from here it looked like it hit Groen, but obviously it did not, but it bounced on the front of the right-handed batter's box and then all the way to the screen behind us. And you know what? I see Josh Wilmot with a bat. I think he might be the designated hitter tonight. As Groen takes a pitch outside, 79 mile an hour delivery from Ferraro. Here's the next delivery. And it's a hard ground ball, a shortstop. Two hops to Avalos. He throws well in time to get Groen. And. The Panthers aren't exactly retired in order, but Ferraro does face the minimum. No runs on no hits, one error, and nobody left on base. We'll continue to the bottom of the second. No score 
between Pearland and Ridge Point. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle, unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom, shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash 3 for 1, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New fast internet 300 megabits per second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post-pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenaugh with Neville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Brett Smostrilla leads it off for Pearland. Right-handed hitter against Hunter Nichols. First pitch is a curveball that misses outside. Last night, Smostrilla was two for three with an RBI. In the 6-2 Ridgepoint victory, Nichols brings it, and that's outside and skips away from the catcher, Kennett. Two and nothing to count. Hunter Nichols has a lot of endurance. In his three postseason starts, he's thrown 97 pitches, 110 pitches, and 112. That was in six innings last Friday against Tompkins. As the 2-0 pitch is low to Smostrilla, and it's 3-0. Brett's uncle Craig played on the 1980 Pearland State Championship team. Here's the pitch from Nichols in there for a strike on an 83 mile an hour curveball. The outfield plays Mostrula slightly to pull. Here's the 3-1. And that's inside right under his elbows for ball four. First base runner allowed by Hunter Nichols. Now Braden Morris, the third baseman. Uh, the third baseman, Braden Morris. Morris takes a long look at David Rogers, his head coach in the third base box. Nichols steps off, and we've reached the point in the evening where there's more infield that's in shade than in sunlight, so the hitters don't have to look at a ball moving in and out of sunlight. There's a quick throw over. It's very close, but Smostula dives back in. Nichols sets up on the first base side of the pitcher's rubber. Comes set. Smostula a short lead. Bunt attempt, but Morse pulled the bat back as the pitch came in high, and it's 1-0. We'll give you a rundown of what happened in game one of other playoff series as this is the round of the Sweet 16 in the state of Texas, Class 6A. Nichols brings it, and a bunt goes foul on the right side. You may notice sometimes when a player bunts, he takes his first couple of steps if he bunts it toward first and he didn't bunt it very far, he'll take his first couple of steps to the right of the foul line because if you are in fair territory and the ball touches you, then you are out. So that was a wise move on the part of Morse to avoid stepping on that ball before it went foul. Before the 1-1, one, one, a pick off! They got him! Hunter Nichols throws out Smostula. 
And there's one away. So now Nichols can go back to throw in from the windup against Morse. The 1 1 count. Pitch on the way. In there for a strike on the outside corner. It's 1 and 2. Nichols rocks and fires. Kennett sup sets up on the outside. It's a high pop up on the infield. It's Parker Martin, now Justin Bosses. And he gets that catch for the second out. By, by the way, Justin Bosses is a four year varsity starter. And on this very field, he caught a soft line drive for the final out in a two game sweep of Kingwood in the regional finals. That was in 2019, and hold on a second, there's a ball loose. Parker Martin has to move away from, from third base and pick it up. So what a great night it was when Ridgepoint closed out that sweep of Kingwood and went to the state tournament for the first time. Pitch on the way, downstairs. It's a ball to Justin Ogle. He was one for three with a double last night. Second pitch is a strike at the knees. I think you could hear that one pop. It was 86 miles an hour according to the scoreboard here at Schroeder Park. Nichols brings the 1-1. One -one. Kind of a quick pitch there and it's, I would say in the dirt, but there's no dirt here. There are just little bitty rubber pellets. The mound is black field turf and the base cutouts are scarlet field turf. You know, scarlet, not red, is the official University of Houston color. Here's the 2-1, and it's a ground ball. Stevens, two steps to his right, bounces off his glove, stays with it, and throws late. That's an E4, and Ogle reaches with two away. Now, Nichols walks Moshtula to begin the bottom of the second inning and he was able to pick him off and I think with the sun where it is it might have possibly slowed down the reaction that Smostrela had when the throw over was made so Ogle has to be careful of that it is a bright sunlight over there for the moment first pitch to Castaneda is outside on the curveball 76 miles an hour and it's 1-0 and oh. Nichols looks over at Ogle. High and away with a second delivery to Castaneda. It's 2-0. Oh. Nichols is not ogling Ogle. He's just looking briefly. Here's the 2-0. Oh. And that looked good, but it was up and in evidently, and it's 3-0. and oh. Pearland not using a DH tonight. Here's a throw over and it was pretty close, but Travis Vlasic applying the tag to Ogle just a split second too late. Three O count on Castaneda. Strike on the outside corner. Looked like he was taking all the way. The outfield fence, by the way, across the board appears to be eight feet tall. There's a big batter's eye in straightaway center, but there's a yellow stripe, and if you hit the batter's eye above the stripe, it's a homer. Castaneda fouls one out of play to the right, and Nichols has fought back after a 3-0 and count. Now the count is full. 3-2 and two count with two outs means Ogle will get a head start on this pitch. But a quick throw over, and he almost got him leaning. Ogle is safe as he dives back in. So Nichols has a pretty good move for a right-hander, but now Coach Rogers moves down from the third base box, and he is letting home plate umpire Mike Grind know that he thinks 
Nichols might be making a move that should be called a balk. Here's the pitch. There goes Ogle. Swung on and missed. Castaneda strikes out to end the second inning. We played two innings here on BikeFortBend.com. Ridgepoint, nothing in Pearland, nothing. We'll be right back. First Iron Automotive, serving Fort Bend County drivers for over 20 years, salutes and congratulates the graduating class of 2022. Wherever the road takes you, you can be sure that you'll need professional auto care along the way. First Iron Automotive's four locations throughout Fort Bend County are the perfect pit stops for all of your auto repair and maintenance needs. Check out the website, firsttireandauto.com, for great savings. The First Iron Automotive technicians can fix all problems on any maker model. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAuto.com. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Texas. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Owen Ferris leads off for Ridgepoint. Top of the third. Nobody has scored yet. Pearland's Caden Ferraro brings him the second pitch, and it's a ground ball to the second baseman. Logan Scott, and he can't make the play. Routine grounder. It had a little bit of clockwise spin on it, but he just kind of looked up before he had secured it. And there's another mistake that allows Ridgepoint to get a man on. So Ferris reaches on the E4, and now the designated hitter is Josh Wilmot. He made his first appearance in the postseason last night and drew a walk. And he gets the start tonight, batting in place of Hunter Nichols. Right-handed hitter. Ferraro comes set, looks at Ferris. Curve ball, and it is bunted down the third base line, but foul, and that was interesting because... Braden Morse, the third baseman, came crashing in, and the ball was popped over his head. So if it would have landed fair and stayed fair, it would have been an easy single for Josh Wilmot. But it's 0-1. Wilmot already squared to bunt. And now a slow throw over, and Ferris is back in. Ferris, by the way, one for two, stealing bases in the 2022 postseason. Pitch on the way. Wilmot takes a curveball, and it's upstairs for a ball. One and one on Josh Wilmot. Wilmot looks down at the signs. Coach Clinton Welch in the third base box. Ferraro brings it, but quickly throws over. He fooled me. He threw it over to first base, and Ferris dived back in. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Wilmot swings and misses. It's 1-2. and two. The shade is now almost completely... Covered the infield, and time is called as Wilmot goes down there to Coach Welch. He's going to get a mini lesson in hitting before he gets back into the box. And to be fair, Josh has not had that much experience in the postseason, so situationally sometimes there are moments when you can expect a certain kind of pitch. And so Ridgepoint always well coached. 
as Josh Wilmot in the box, armed with knowledge. There's another throw over, and when Ferraro makes that throw, he just steps off with his left foot and throws quickly. It's a very uncomplicated motion. Wilmot swings and misses, and down he goes for the first out. Second strikeout for Ferraro. Now Mason Dossett. Let's thank the good Lord above that Mason is okay when he ran into that metal fence in the first playoff game against Seven Lakes. We were very worried about him. There's another throw over, and Ferris is back. Mason did not even slow down when he hit that wall, and it was tough, but he snapped back and swings and misses at the first pitch. 86 mile an hour fastball from Ferraro. And almost miraculously, Mason did not have a single broken bone. He just kind of had a busted lip and a lot of soreness. Another throw over to try and get Owen Ferris. Oh yeah, I promised you what uh, some results on what happened in playoffs last night in game ones in the regional semifinals. There's a pitch upstairs to Dossett, and it's one and one. In region three on the other side, straight Jesuit beat Katy two to one in game one of their series. They're playing tonight at Maid Creek, and the Katy Tigers have to win to stay alive. Pitch to Dossett, breaking ball is in there for a strike. One and two, the count. And there's a ground ball, could be two. Scoop to second, but Dawson is just too fast, and it's not a double play. But he reaches on the fielder's choice. And that goes four to six. Logan Scott to Anthony Avalos to get the second out of the inning. And let's see if maybe Coach Welch decides to put Dawson in motion with Zion Stevens coming up. Stevens 0 for 1 tonight. Ferraro looks over at Dawson. Pitch on the way. Check swing. They appeal to first base. And first base umpire David Spiegel says that Zion did not swing. 1-0. Ferraro with a long in at his catch, a long look in at his catcher, Jace Caceres. Here's the 1 0, way outside, 2 0 on Stevens. Crowding the plate from the right handed box, ready for a 2 0. And he asked for time, and Ferraro goes ahead and throws the pitch. You know, the University of Houston is a great place to play a game at this time of year because by the time the game begins, all the seats are in shade. There's a pitch that's down, 3-0 and on Stevens, who leads the Panthers in drawing walks in this postseason. He's drawn seven already. Pearland fans have that burning, burning yearning for Caden Ferraro to get another out here. 3-0 pitch in there for a strike. Stevens was taking all the way. If he can reach, Parker Martin will be next. And there goes Dossett and a swing and a little tapper goes foul, bounces up and hits Stevens in the knee. And the count is now three and two with two outs. So Ferris will get a, I'm sorry, um, Dossett will get a head start on this pitch no matter what. Got to watch out though because Ferraro has a good move. Here's the pitch and it's a ground ball to second base off the second baseman's glove and safe. And I'm going to give a single to Stevens for that when he hit it hard. It was a one hopper and Logan Scott had to move hard to his right 
And now there are two men on for Parker Martin. First and second. No score yet between Ridgepoint and Pearland. And now there's going to be a short conversation. Jace Caceres, the catcher, goes out there to talk to Caden Ferraro. Stevens really needed a hit, and uh, he earned one right there. Good, solid contact. Okay, Parker Martin. Let's see you come through in the clutch. He grounded one back to Ferraro his first time. First pitch to him. Strike on the outside corner. 75 miles an hour as Ferraro took something off of that one. Dossett with great speed at second. Here's the 0-1. Martin sends a liner, and it is again off the glove of Ogle, and a throw to second in time. He recovered beautifully, and they get the force on Stevens. That is a shame for Ridgepoint. So no runs on one hit, one error, and nobody left on base, or actually two left on base. Sorry about that. We'll continue to the bottom of the third. Zero to zero, Pearland and Ridgepoint. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom, shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash 3 for 1, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New fast internet, 300 megabits per second, customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. Logan Scott to lead it off for Pearland in the bottom half of inning number three. No one has scored yet. Ridgepoint, if they get the win tonight, sweeps the series. Pearland is a tough baseball team, and you know they're going to be fighting all the way. Over on the other side of the Region 3 bracket, Strake Jesuit beat Katie last night 2-1, to one, and Strake trying to finish off that series in their game tonight. Now Nichols brings it. First pitch. Down and away to Logan Scott. 0 for 1 last night. He did put down a sacrifice bunt. Nichols rocks and fires. Swing and a miss at a pitch way outside. It's 1 and 1 on Scott. Here's the pitch by Nichols. Downstairs, it was over, but it was low. Temperature has gone down four degrees since we started. It's now at 91 degrees. Here's the 2-1. Ground ball, two bosses, charges, throws, and it's high and late, and Glassick came off the bag to catch it. And so Logan Scott is safe, and in hindsight, maybe bosses should have charged that one a little bit harder. That is an infield single for Logan Scott. I think he was going to make it even if the throw had not lifted Vlasic up off the bag. So now it is up to Nichols to pitch around. That first guy getting on, and here is Jace Caceres, the catcher. He squares to bunt. Has a big old towel hanging out of his back pocket. Pitch on the way. 
way outside. Kennett does a great job of backhanding it to make sure that Logan Scott doesn't advance. I mean, that's a big towel, like a center in football. Stick it out of his back pocket. The kind of towel you'd like to have if you were taking a snap from, uh, his name escapes me. There's a throw over. Mark Schlereth. You can look it up later, but there's a good reason why you would want to have a towel. He's retired, of course. And a very good uh, studio guy for football. Before we see the 1-0 pitch, Nichols steps off. Caceres is poised to bunt. And again, Nichols steps off. Pearland folks getting a little annoyed. Or was it Caceres who asked for time? I think it was actually because he has now met Coach Rogers halfway between third base and home. And they're talking hitting strategy. Pearland has been to the state baseball tournament five times. The first time they were there in 1980, they won it. All right, Caceres poised to bunt yet again. Here's the 1-0, and it's bunted to the right, but into foul territory. There is field turf on every square inch of the surface at the U of H other than the hard rubber of home plate and the hard rubber of the pitcher's rubber. Here's the 1-1. Caceres bunts, foul again. And on the last two pitches, the angle at which he's placed his bat out there couldn't make it do anything other than go foul. And now, for the count of one and two, you wonder if Coach Rogers wants him to try to bunt again. He is squared right now. Nichols comes set, and he pulls the bat back as the pitch comes in high. It's two and two. Crowding the plate from the right-handed box, still squared to bunt. Scott taking a short lead off of first. Nichols throws over, Vlasic applies the tag, but Scott is back in standing. Pearland with the maroon jersey tops and the white pants. Their students are chanting, Caceres ready. The 2-2, and he went after it. Foul tip into Kenneth Smith. There's a strikeout for Nichols, and a big one. One away, and Scott still at first base. Now back to the top, Anthony Avalos. I don't think they're going to have him bunting. Quick throw over, and it gets past Vlasic, but what luck. It goes off the foot of the umpire, David Spiegel. And if it had not hit his foot, there's no way in the world that Scott would not have made it to second. One of those things that tells you, you know, it just it might be your night if you're the Panthers. Pitch to Avalos. Takes a curveball strike on the outside corner at 71 miles an hour from Hunter Nichols. Making his fourth postseason start. Before the 0-1, a pickoff try. And Scott is back in. Hunter's pitch count is getting up a little bit, but it doesn't bother him. The 0-1, curveball high, Kennett frames it. Did not get the call, nor he, nor should he have from home plate umpire Mike Grine, who is doing a great job, just like Kevin Ellis did last night. Nichols looks over there. There's another throw, and they got him again! The second pickoff of the night for Nichols. 
There are two away now. And the bases are empty for the Pearland Oilers leadoff hitter. And now Coach Rogers is talking to home plate umpire Mike Grind, saying he thinks that that Nichols has committed some kind of infraction. And because of their respect for Coach Rogers, the Pearland fans are in complete agreement. But in this stage of the playoffs, you have four umpires. There's an umpire all around the diamond. So if nobody saw anything that was worthy of a balk, then it's not a balk. Swing and a miss. One and two to Avalos. Now one thing that Coach Rogers could do would be ask uh, Mr. Grind to seek help from his other crew members, but there is a swing and a miss. And Nichols gets out of it with no damage. The pickoff throw was huge. And we'll be back going to the fourth inning. Still nothing to nothing, Ridge Point and Pearland. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. A game without a crowd is just a scrimmage. A performance without an audience is just a rehearsal. Without your presence, high school sports and the performing arts aren't possible. Ensure that these essential extracurricular activities continue to enrich the lives of students in Texas. Purchase a ticket to your local high school's game or performance. This message presented by the UIL and the Texas High School Athletic Directors Association. Don't miss the UIL Baseball State Championship starting Wednesday, June 8th at UFCU Dishbrock Field in Austin and Dell Diamond in Round Rock. Ticket information and more can be found at UILTexas.org. Justin Bossas leads off the top of the fourth for your Ridgepoint Panthers. He flied out to left field his first time. Curveball catches the outside corner. First delivery from Caden Ferraro. So Vasas now 9 for 26 in the postseason. By the way, uh, either he's wearing no socks under the stirrups or those are very dirty socks. Probably very dirty. Outside with the second delivery and it's 1 and 1. So in Region 1 tonight, you got Keller against Flower Mound Marcus, and Marcus needing to win to stay alive. Curveball high to Vasas. So Keller beat Marcus 4-2 to two last night, and they're playing at Denton Geyer High School tonight. Marcus must win to stay alive. That is Region 1. Here's the 2-1 to Vasas. Downstairs makes it 3-1. and one. In Region 2, the Woodlands beat Rockwall. 4-3 to three in game one last night and they're playing at Concordia University in game two Woodland's trying to close that one out in a sweep 3-1 pitch to Vasas rolls over on it, two hopper to Morse at third throws and it pulls the first baseman to his right but Ogle keeps a foot on the bag and Vasas is out the Ridgepoint fans thought maybe the call had pulled him off the players coming up the steps And I wonder if Coach Welch is just going to ask Mr. Grind, the home plate umpire, to see if maybe the umpire, Mr. Spiegel, at first base could ask for some help. Perhaps from second base umpire, Dwayne Cooper. So you gotta be tactful about these things and Coach Welch is always tactful. Listen to a little organ music while the umpires talk to each other. Yeah. 
Those are the Ridge Point fans cheering because, no, it's the Pearland fans cheering. Because the call is out on Justin Bosses. So nothing changed. One out, and now it is Travis Blassett. So that out on Vosses goes five to three. Vlasic reached on an error in the second. Here's the pitch from Ferraro way outside. one -oh pitch to Vlasic downstairs. You know, sports is meant to be an escape, and that's really what it should be. These games make us so happy with all the enjoyment they give us. Hold that thought. Swing and a miss by Vlasic. It's now two and one, but we see in right center field the Texas flag, the United States flag, and the University of Houston flag all flying at half staff because of the tragedy in Uvalde. 2-1 pitch, swung on and missed. It's 2-2. Two and two. So our thoughts and prayers to everyone who is hurting so badly over that and the hurt's not going to go away for a long time. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Vlasic flails away and strikes out. Really fooled on that 73 mile an hour dead fish changeup from Ferraro. A brilliant pitch. Third strikeout for Ferraro, and now J.J. Kennett stands in with nobody on and two out. First pitch to J.J., outside corner strike. Nice, nice late movement. That wasn't a curveball, but it did move away from Kennett very nicely. Kind of had that screwball action on it. Swings and misses at a pitch. That was on the inside corner. And Ferraro is really making it move right now. Here's the 0-2. Off the end of the bat, Kennett staying alive. That was a nice spoil by J.J. Coming out of the dugout to run that foul ball down is Jaden Barfield. Ends up having to go a long way. He's right by the 330 sign down the right field line. And he returns that same baseball back to Ferraro. And now Ferraro takes that other ball back and uh, okay. He returned the ball that was just struck to the home plate umpire, Mr. Grind. Swing and a miss by Kennett, foul tip into the mitt of Caceres. And it's a 1-2-3 inning for Ferraro and the Pearland Oilers in the top of the fourth. We'll go to the bottom of the fourth inning. Nothing to nothing, Ridgepoint and Pearland. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash 3 for 1, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Requires paperless building and auto pay. New fast internet 300 megabits for second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. Hunter Nichols is talking with home plate umpire Mike Grine, and I can imagine what it might be. He might just be trying to make sure he is fully in compliance and doesn't get called for a balk. So Nichols in three innings thus far, 57% strikes on 42 pitches. No hits or runs allowed, three strikeouts and just one walk. And he has really helped himself out with a couple of pickoffs to first base. 
Ferraro, by the way, in four innings has given up, according to the Pearland Game Changer page, no hits or runs, but uh, I didn't score it that way. According to the Pearland Game Changer page, Pearland has committed three errors and Ridgepoint has committed two. I have at least one fewer error for both teams. All right, here we go. Ridgepoint back in the field with their gloves on, and John Moya will lead it off. 0 for 1 with a ground ball to third base. Pearland fans chanting, a chanting, and there is a hit by pitch. The ball broke down and in and hit Moya in the foot. And Ridgepoint appeals thinking that maybe he had offered at it with a bunt attempt, but the third base umpire Kevin, Kevin Ellis put his palms down. He did not offer at it, so the leadoff man is on after one pitch, and now it's Caden Ferraro. You can't keep a good man down for too long, but Ferraro 0 for 4 thus far in this series. The lights are on. Night is falling, and we have a scoreless game where Ridgepoint is going to try to get the victory and sweep this series. It is tough and tight. Pitch on the way. Upstairs to Ferraro. Virtually no wind here at the U of H. And now Coach Welch asks for time and wants to go out and talk to Nichols and Kennett will join him on the mound. And I want to say something here. I, I just I don't want to be melodramatic. I just want to be honest. It is such a thing of beauty to watch these young men come out and play this great game. It's, it's wonderful to watch the spirit of the student body. And these kids are so precious, you know. They're, they're all grown up now. They don't look like little kids, but they are just as precious as the, the little ones, you know, who have the toothy grin or even the toothless grin. So let's just be thankful for every moment that we have to enjoy watching these young men play ball and for them and their friends to enjoy each other's company and celebrate graduations and things like that. All right, here we go. Pitch to Ferraro, and it's upstairs for a ball, two and nothing. Moya leading off of first base after getting hit by a pitch. Two out to Ferraro. Inside corner strike. And Ferraro turns and says a little something to the home plate umpire, Mr. Grine. Just checking about the location. Nichols with the right arm, dangling with the ball, gripped. Now comes set, brings the 2-1. Swing and a miss. Two and two on an 87 mile an hour fastball tied him up inside as the righty works to the lefty. Nichols looks over at Moya leading off of first. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Swing and a miss, the high heat got him. First out of the inning. Here is Brett Smostrilla. For Nichols, that is strikeout number four. First pitch to Smostrilla, way outside. Kennett slides over to keep it in front. Nobody attempted a steal last night, and nobody has tonight either. Here's the 1-0. High and away for ball two to Brett Smostrilla.
The year after Pearland won the 1980 state championship beating San Antonio Roosevelt, they lost to Lubbock Monterey in the state final 7-3. Smostrilla takes one downstairs, and it's 3-0. One out. Runner at first, that's Moya. Pearland batting in the bottom of the fourth in a scoreless game. Here's the 3-0, but first a throw over. And Coach Rogers is still talking to umpire Kevin Ellis at third base, lobbying for a balk call. Here's the pitch. Strike on the outside corner, three and one. Ridge Point fans making noise in behalf of Hunter Nichols. Smostrilla ready. Down and away, ball four. Two runners on with one out. Now Braden Morse will bat. Hunter Nichols and the Ridgepoint Panthers could really use a double play ball right here. But you also have to keep in mind, be quick infielders because this is a hard field turf surface. Harder than most. The ball will get to you quickly. Just missing the outside corner with the first pitch. It's one and nothing on Morse who hit a pop-up to Vasas in inning number two. Nichols comes set, looks back at Moya. And Stevens moves over from second base and Nichols turns, but no pickoff throw is made. Morse open stance from the right-handed box. Pitch on the way. Strike at the knees. One and one on the 85 mile an hour delivery. Nichols looks in at Kennett. Kennett sets up on the outside half. Here comes the pitch. That's a fly ball to left field. It's sending Groen back. He'll have a play. He's got it. The runners have to retreat. And there are two outs. All right, so the infield can go to normal depth. They had been at double play depth, and now Justin Ogle, he's 0 for 1, but he did reach on an error by Zion Stevens when he came up in the second. Here's the pitch. Outside corner strike on the breaking ball, moving away very nicely from Ogle. Got a hit last night, it was a double. Nichols looks back at second base. Pitch on the way, curve ball, strike on the outside corner and Ogle looks back at umpire Mike Grine. He didn't think that was a strike. Ridge Point fans really wanting Hunter Nichols to come up with the big K. Shakes off a sign from Kennett. He hasn't done that much tonight. Here comes the 0-2, not yet. He looks back at second base and quickly back to the bag goes the runner. That being Moya. He's at second. Brett Smostrela is at first. And it's up to Justin Ogle if Pearland's going to get something across here in the bottom of the fourth. And it's a ground ball base hit in the right field. Owen Ferris doesn't catch it cleanly, and Pearland's going to score. Ferris throws to third. It gets past Parker Martin, and two runs are going to score. And on the play, Justin Ogle ends up at second. So a base hit for Ogle. 
Ferris didn't field it cleanly. That made it very easy for Moya to come around and score the first run. And then Smostrula kept on coming. And then a throw over to third and Smostrula just decided, okay, I'll, I'll go all the way home. Two outs, runner second. It's two to nothing Pearland and Nichols trying to get out of this problem. And it's a two hopper. Parker Martin throws to first and Pearland is retired. However, they pick up the two runs on a single by Ogle that brings home two runs and an error made that a little bit easier for Pearland. We'll go to the fifth, two to nothing. Oilers over the Panthers. We'll be right back. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash 3 for 1, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Requires paperless building and auto pay. New fast internet 300 megabits per second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. In summing up what happened on that run scoring single by Justin Ogle, I didn't tell you that Isaiah Castaneda was the batter and he grounded out to Parker Martin at third to retire the side. So there were two runs on one hit, one error, and one man left on base. All right, Ridge Point is down now, two to nothing, just like they were last night, but they were down two to nothing. Did I say two to one? I meant to say they were down two to nothing last night, just like they are now, but it was a lot earlier. After two and a half innings, they were down two to nothing. Now Carter Groen, Owen Ferris, and Josh Wilmot. Ferraro ready, brings it. Ground ball up the middle, and it's gloved by Avalos. A late throw gets past first base, and Groen is going to stay right there. And let's give Groen a single. He hit that one hard, and Avalos did remarkably just to smother the ball and keep it from going into the outfield, and he did get a throw away, but Groen was going to be safe anyway, so that's a hit. Now Ferris... Reached on an error, but was later forced out at second on a ground ball by Dossett. Ferris uh, just noticed this. He's kind of built like that guy named Brett Butler. He used to play for the Braves and the Dodgers in the 80s and 90s. Lefty to righty. Ferraro deals a curveball strike. 75 miles an hour. Nothing in one on Owen Ferris. After Ferris, it'll be Josh Wilmot. Pitch on the way. And that is down the right field line. Could be trouble. Long run for Ogle, and he gets there. I think he misjudged it at first. It certainly wasn't because of the sun, because we've seen the last of the sun until about 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. So a fly ball out to right field, and there's one away. Groen still at first, and now Josh Wilmot, who's... 0 for 1 with a, stringing, a swinging strikeout in the third inning. There's a fairly large gap between Moya in center field and Castaneda in right field. And I think I might have misidentified. Uh, yeah, I said that Ogle made the play. It was actually Castaneda. Ogle is the first baseman, Castaneda in right field, and it is Castaneda who retired Ferris. All right, 1-0 the count on Wilmot. That pitch is down, and it's 2-0. Mike Grine, home plate umpire, wants to give Ferraro a new baseball.
The wind is absolutely still on this magnificent evening. Temperature has dropped into the high 80s now. Wilmot ready. Swings late and fouls it over to the right side and out of play. Over the metal roof. Ridgepoint lost one playoff series to Deer Park in the regional semifinals. That series was played here at U of H. It went three games. Pitch on the way. Wilmot looks at a curveball in there for a strike. It's two and two. And Ridgepoint, it's other time at the University of Houston's home field. Beat Kingwood in the two-game sweep. That was 2019. And then they went to Round Rock. Here's the 2-2. Wilmot, base hit in the left field. Hard ground ball. Rowan stops at second. And Wilmot gets his first base hit of the postseason. Didn't see his first action until last night. So two hits in the inning. Groen is in scoring position. Now Mason Dossett. You know, one thing that I've mentioned about the features of Ridgepoint's ballpark, you have this big press box in the middle right behind home plate that separates all the home fans from the visiting fans. But here at the University of Houston, you have a mixed student section. Everybody crammed together right behind home plate. A lot of purple, a lot of maroon. First pitch to Dossett, swings uh, early, really got out in front of that one and bounces it off the front of the third base dugout. By the way, last night, Ridgepoint was the home team and they were in the first base dugout. Now they're the visitors and they're over there on the third base side. Nothing and one on Dossett who reached on a fielder's choice. Slightly closed stance, crowding the plate from the right-handed box. Here comes the 0-1. Swing and a miss. Nice rip. Scoreless? I'm sorry. It was a scoreless game until the bottom of the fourth when Pearland scored twice. So Pearland leads two to nothing. Ridgepoint batting in the top of the fifth. One out. Runners at first and second. And an 0-2 count on Dossett. Ferraro comes set. Now brings it. Nice job by Dossett to fight it off and foul it out of play to the right. Roger Smith and the silent partner, Rosie Vega, the producer in the studios of Vibe World Headquarters. Another 0-2 pitch to Dossett. Checks his swing, and he went around. They appealed to the first base umpire, David Spiegel, and they said, yes, it's a swing. Two outs. Now it'll be Zion Stevens. Zion's got to hit his last time up. For Ferraro, that is strikeout number five. Stevens represents the go-ahead run at home plate. Ferraro looks back at Groen. No one's holding him on. Curve ball is down to Stevens. Stevens steps out of the box, gives himself a little shoulder shake. If he can reach, Parker Martin would be next. It's late already, top of the fifth, and this is where Ridgepoint has really excelled in the postseason when they've had to have it in the late innings. They've gotten it done offensively. Here's the 1-0. Check swing, and that's down and in. Two and nothing on Zion Stevens. Zion as in lion, his name sounds like heaven but he would love to unleash hell right now. I would say hi to Russell Crowe listening tonight, but he probably isn't. There's a turnaround and a throw back to second. Groen dives back in. And Ferraro, the left-hander, uh, left kind of wheeled all the way around. I guess wheeled his body 180 degrees before he let that pickoff throw go. Pitch to Stevens. There's a strike on the outside corner at the knees. It's two and one. Steps out. It's his time. Ferraro ready to work quickly. Here comes the two one. 
Here's another strike on the outside corner and it's two and two. Stevens has to move into protect mode right now. If he could shoot one down the right field line, there's a lot of space between the right fielder Isaiah Castaneda and that right field line. Now Ferraro steps off and I think second base umpire Dwayne Cooper said a little something to him. Okay. 2-2 two -two pitch. Here it comes. And staying alive, staying alive. Stevens hits a tapper foul off the front of the third base dugout. Beautiful cloudless evening at the home field of the Houston Cougars. Ridgepoint trailing, two to nothing. Stevens is ready. Ferraro comes set. Pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. And that'll do it for Ridgepoint in the top of the fifth. They get no runs on two hits, no errors. Two men left on. And we will proceed to the bottom of the fifth. Pearland two, Ridgepoint nothing as the Oilers try to stave off the sweep. We'll be right back on BikeFortBend.com. First Iron Automotive serving Fort Bend County drivers for over 20 years salutes and congratulates the graduating class of 2022. Wherever the road takes you, you can be sure that you'll need professional auto care along the way. First Iron Automotive's four locations throughout Fort Bend County are the perfect pit stops for all of your auto repair and maintenance needs. Check out the website firsttireandauto.com for great savings. The First Iron Automotive technicians can fix all problems on any maker model. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAuto.com. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Welcome back. We always like to say that we would like for you to put in your earbuds and listen to the ball game right here inside the ballpark. And so Carter Groen's dad, Clary, just waved at me up here in the press box. Normally I'm out among the peeps at the high school venues, but here at a great college venue, you got a press box. So thanks for listening, Clary. Thanks for all your support. The eight, nine, and number one hitters up for Pearland, leading two to nothing in the bottom of the fifth. Hunter Nichols has thrown 60 pitches. He's got a whole lot more in the tank. But his teammates need to get some runs on the board, and the first pitch to Logan Scott is bunted. Nichols comes to get it and throws over to Vlasic in time. So that was the element of surprise, but it did not work really. One to three it goes, one away. And now Jace Caceres, who's 0 for 1 with a, three, a third inning strikeout. So for Ridgepoint, if they could get the win tonight, they could graduate the seniors tomorrow and not worry about playing a game. But if Pearland prevails, then the uh, so there's a pop-up by Caceres going over on the right, and it is out of play on top of the grassy berm over there. A lot of kids playing. It's a beautiful thing. Not completely dark just yet. But anyway, what was I saying? Oh, yeah, the graduation thing. So Ridgepoint seniors are going to graduate in the morning. But a bunch of people that were planning on graduation parties if Pearland wins this game, too. Well, uh, Ridgepoint folks will be coming back here to the ballpark. All right, Nichols ready to bring it to Caceres. Nothing and won the count. Now he's going to swing away, or but he keeps the bat on the shoulder and takes it down and away for a ball, one and one. And you can see the protocol, the respect between catchers. Caceres is a catcher, and he gently nudged the ball with his foot over to Kennett to make it easier on his counterpart catcher. Pitch inside underneath his elbows. And the count is two and one. So it's fraternal 
yet competitive, you know. Here's the 2-1. Caceres swings, and that's a fly ball to Groen. Hardly has to move at all. Makes the catch in left field. And he had him played perfectly. Groen is a long way from the line. I'd say he is a good 40 yards away from the left field line, but the ball went right to him. Two outs, base is empty, and back to the top, Anthony Avalos. Wearing those old school stirrup socks, maroon with the three identical stripes on each calf. Nichols brings it. Bunt attempt, bat pulled back, in there for a called strike. Avalos crowding the plate. Here comes the 0-1. Checked his swing and it was over but low. The count even, one and one. The winner of this series to meet the winner of the straight Jesuit versus Katie series. A late swing by Avalos and back into the screen. It's one and two. Nichols gets the sign. Brings the one two. Fly ball to Ferris in right field. It'll hang up, easy play for him. Makes the catch with one hand. And for Hunter Nichols, it is a one, two, three inning. We will go to the sixth. Ridgepoint trying to sweep the series, but trailing in this game two to nothing. This is VipeFortBend.com. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash three for one, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer, restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New fast internet 300 megabits per second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. So Pearland is 31 8 and 1 after getting their 17 game losing streak snapped last night in game one. They're the top seed out of District 23 6A with a record of 13 and 1. The last team in their district. To defeat them was Alvin, and that was way back on March the 22nd. Now Parker Martin. Martin will lead off lefty versus lefty in the top of the sixth. Two to nothing, Pearland on top. First pitch to Parker. Down and in for a ball. Ferraro has thrown 75 pitches. Here comes the next one. High chopper towards second. Charging and making the play is Logan Scott. One away. 4-3 it goes. And Ferraro could feel pretty good if he gets through the top of the sixth without giving up any runs. Because you have the gauntlet of Vasas and Vlasic. First pitch to Vasas is a strike on the outside corner. He's 0 for 2 tonight. Here comes the second one, and it's a soft liner. It is short hopped by the second baseman, Logan Scott, and he throws in time to get Vasas. It was very close because this has happened a couple of times tonight when balls have been hit to Scott. He'll pull the glove up off the ground and think the ball is in his glove, but the ball has stayed on the ground. But he recovered in time for the second consecutive 4-3 put out. 
Now Travis Vlasic reached on an error and struck out swinging. Ferraro brings it way outside. One and nothing. Ridgepoint has won 13, 13 of its last 14 and seven straight since they lost their by district series opener to Seven Lakes. That's their only postseason loss so far. Second pitch was a ball outside to Vlasic. Pitch from Ferraro, and it's a soft grounder to the second baseman, Scott. 4 3 put out three times in a row. It's a 1 2 3 inning for Caden Ferraro. And he has faced the Ridgepoint Panthers through six innings, and I think he's still got a lot left in the tank. So we will go to the bottom of the sixth. Pearland trying to expand its 2 0 lead. We'll be back on bikefortbend.com. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavanaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing, or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. That between innings break took a little bit longer than normal because J.J. Kennett was in the on-deck circle and he had to take a minute to get his catcher's gear on. So he already had the shin guards on. But now he's out there and here we go with John Moya leading off for Pearland in the bottom of the sixth. The Oilers lead it two to nothing. First pitch swinging fly ball to Mason Dawson in center. This is his first Defensive chance of the night, and he makes the play. One pitch, one out. Pitch count is not an issue for Hunter Nichols. That was his 70th pitch. <clears throat> now Caden Ferraro would like to help his cause and get a rally going to add to this 2-0 lead. First pitch to him, breaking ball way upstairs. Nichols kind of snatching at the return throw. He was very upset with not locating that one better. Pitch to Ferraro, inside corner strike. Ferraro 0 for 2, open stance, left-handed hitter. They play him slightly to pull, and he hits it high in the air to right field. It'll hang up for Ferris. He's about 20 feet from the warning track, and he makes that catch. Quickly, two are out. Now, Brett Smostrilla walked in the second and got picked off, walked and came around to score the second Pearland run in the fourth. Coach Rogers and Smostrula chatting between third and home. 
By the way, looking ahead to the Ridgepoint 7th, the hitters who are due are J.J. Kennett, Carter Groen, and Owen Ferris. All right, Schmastrilla stands in. Pitch on the way. Strike on the outside corner to Brett Smostrilla, whose uncle was a state champion for Pearland back in 1980. Can't remember if Smostrilla was on the 81 team that lost to Lubbock Monterey in the state final. Pearland got back in 1984, lost to Brazoswood in the semis. Swing and a miss by Brett Smostrilla, and it's nothing in two. Smostrilla steps out. Wants to make Nichols wait a little bit. Hunter rocks and fires. Here's another fly ball to Dossett in center. Starts back, comes in. He's got it. Three fly ball outs, and now Ridgepoint is down to its final inning. And as I said, Kennett, Rowan, and Ferris are the hitters who are due. We'll be back on BiteFortBend.com right after this. First Tire and Automotive serving Fort Bend County drivers for over 20 years salutes and congratulates the graduating class of 2022. Wherever the road takes you, you can be sure that you'll need professional auto care along the way. First Tire and Automotive's four locations throughout Fort Bend County are the perfect pit stops for all of your auto repair and maintenance needs. Check out the website firsttireandauto.com for great savings. The First Tire and Automotive technicians can fix all problems on any maker model. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. FirstTireAndAuto.com Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Caden Ferraro has thrown 81 pitches in his six innings, 69% of those for strikes. He's only given up two hits, no runs, six strikeouts, and he hasn't walked anyone. So Rich Point has had a hard time solving this young man who has come through in the clutch, but we've seen seventh inning magic from the Panthers before, so we'll see if they can make it happen here this evening. J.J. Kennett leads it off. Nothing has changed defensively for Pearland. Ferraro still rocking. Here comes the first pitch to Kennett, and it's a ground ball to first base. Easy play for Justin Ogle. Runs to the bag, and there's one out. Now it's Carter Groen, who is one for two. He has to go over and get J.J. Kennett's bat. Ferraro certainly has not looked like someone out there who, uh, for whom the moment is too big. Curveball strike on the outside corner, 73 miles an hour from Ferraro. He wants to throw the next pitch right now. Here it comes. Check swing by Groen and he went around. They appealed to the first base umpire David Spiegel and Groen is down 0-2. Ridgepoint fans not real happy with that call but you can't always get what you want. Here's the 0-2. Swing and a miss and down goes Groen. Two outs, base is empty, and it's up to Owen Ferris to prolong this thing. So Ferris is speedy. You wonder if he might try to put down a bunt. Rich Point has not had a lot of success with the bunt tonight.
Nothing happening in the Pearland bullpen, just in case you're wondering. Josh Wilmot waits to bat next. Curveball high to Ferris. Pitch on the way, way outside, two and nothing. If anybody manages to barrel something up and hit a long ball, it will not be wind aided. There is no wind. See if Ferris is in a mode of take pitches till you get a strike. There it is. It's two and one. He started to pull the trigger on that one, but let it go by, and it's two and one. Ferraro brings it. Swing and a miss on a pitch down and in. That was downright nasty. And the Pearland fans getting to their feet, anticipating victory. Pitch on the way. Called strike three, game over. Pearland has defeated Ridgepoint, and we are going to go to a game three tomorrow night at 7 o'clock right here at the University of Houston. We'll be back with the totals right after this on VibeFortBend.com. Coming in at five foot three inches, it's number one mom. She switched to Xfinity and got the all new three for one bundle. Unlimited internet, streaming, and Xfinity mobile. All for what you could pay wireless companies for just one 5G unlimited line. Boom shakalaka. That's why they call her the master of moolah, the sultan of savings, the queen of cash. And now, also with Xfinity Internet, you can get unlimited data, Wi-Fi equipment, and a free Flex 4K streaming box included with a two-year rate guarantee and no term contract. All for just $30 per month when you add an Xfinity mobile plan at regular rates. Go to Xfinity.com slash 3 for 1, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit an Xfinity store today. Limited time offer. Restrictions apply. Requires paperless billing and auto pay. New fast internet 300 megabits for second customers only. Xfinity Mobile requires post-pay Xfinity internet. After 24 months, regular rates apply to all services and devices. Hello fans, this is Bradley Stavenal with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local hometown trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and 9 auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. First Tire and Automotive serving Fort Bend County drivers for over 20 years salutes and congratulates the graduating class of 2022. Wherever the road takes you, you can be sure that you'll need professional auto care along the way. First Tire and Automotive's four locations throughout Fort Bend County are the perfect pit stops for all of your auto repair and maintenance needs. Check out the website firsttireandauto.com for great savings. The First Tire and Automotive technicians can fix all problems on any maker model. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Tonight's exclusive VibeFortBend.com radio broadcast of Ridgepoint and Pearland in Game 2 of the Region 36A semifinal playoff series has been brought to you by Xfinity, the future of awesome, by First Tire and Auto, four great Fort Bend County locations where you can get the best prices on tires, you get great service, anything your vehicle needs to run at its very best. All four locations open Monday through Saturday. Visit FirstTireAndAuto.com. 
by Archer Volkswagen. Open since 1956 and ready to serve you. Archer Volkswagen is on Highway 59 South just inside the Sam Houston Tollway. And you will feel like family at Archer Volkswagen. And by the Needville Insurance Agency. Call Bradley Stavanaugh and he and his team will get you the very lowest premium on your car insurance and your home insurance. Their number is 979-793-7411 or go to needvilleinsurance.com. So here are your totals. Ridgepoint with no runs on two hits. According to the Pearland Game Changer page, they made four errors and left four men on base. I had Ridgepoint making three errors and Pearland with two hits, but the Pearland Game Changer folks said that Pearland got the two runs on only one hit off Hunter Nichols and that the Oilers committed three errors themselves and two runners were left on base. And a winning pitcher is Caden Ferraro. Hunter Nichols takes the loss, so Ferraro, he was spectacular. Two hits allowed, eight strikeouts, didn't walk anybody, only needed 90 pitches to get it done. And Hunter Nichols, six innings, and he was spectacular. So either one or two hits, depending on uh, which scorebook you're looking at. But he gives up the two runs. Neither of those were earned. He struck out four and only walked two and helped himself out by picking off a couple of runners. So Hunter Nichols takes his second loss of the postseason, and he certainly deserved better. But uh, Caden Ferraro, boy, he was Mr. Clutch. He was nails. And so it's going to come down to a game three tomorrow night at 7 p.m. So let's talk about how Pearland got its two runs. Well, John Moya led off the bottom of the fourth. He got hit by a pitch. After Ferraro struck out, there was a walk to Brett Smostrula. So two runners on right there without benefit of a hit. And then a fly ball out to Braden uh, Braden Morse hit one to Carter Groen in left field. But then Justin Ogle... Got the single, and it's not a surprise that it drove home Moya from second, but it should not have driven home Smostrula from first as Ridgepoint mishandled some of the throws. Right after that, Isaiah Castaneda grounded out to third in that end of the inning, but the damage was done. Two runs came in, and so that is the undoing of Ridgepoint in this game. So now it is Ridgepoint who has to bounce back, and this is the first time in the postseason that they have tasted defeat since that first game against Seven Lakes. They bounced back nicely from that, but these are the Pearland Oilers. They are a stronger team than these Ridgepoint Panthers. I'm, no, I didn't mean that. I meant they are stronger than the Seven Lakes Spartans. No offense to our good friends in Seven Lakes. So it should be a dandy of a ball game, but it's going to be a busy day for the Ridgepoint Seniors especially and we will be back with you at 6 40 p.m tomorrow night right here at schroeder park on the campus of the university of houston so for rosie bega merle bertrand suda venkat bob mckay patrick kinnick and the entire vipefortben.com team we thank you so much for listening the final score pearland two ridge point nothing this series is going to a winner take all game three We'll be back with you tomorrow night right here along Scott Street and Cullen Boulevard and all those other great downtown locations here in Houston. Good night, everybody. God bless, and we will talk to you tomorrow.